completely boiling. I'm absolutely dithering now. I'm no expert on Rosicrucianism. And so they still exist today, Rosicrucians? Maybe. I think, like, the big boys of occult academia are all of these secret Rosicrucian orders, so I'm not going to try and explain their work. If you're interested in this, I'd say, yeah, read Francis Yates, uh, The Rosicrucian Enlightenment. I'd also, you know, I don't want to deny you the pleasure of watching a video of Terence McKenna wandering around this castle in like a medieval rough. So I'll put the links for that below. But I'll leave a little quote here of what Terence McKenna has to say about, you know, the alchemical project. So he says, perhaps it is we who are the naive ones. Even to this moment, we cannot locate the seat of the imagination in matter. We cannot trace the evolution of a human thought in matter. It's almost as though the alchemists, in their humility, had a deeper insight into the workings of the world than we have achieved today. And the great work of alchemy was not transmut transmutation of crude metals into gold, but psychological process co-mingling with the chemical. So yeah, it's very allegorical, symbolic way of understanding both the world, scientific observations, but also like the mystical side of the mind. Um, Terence McKenna kind of attributes a similar process with shamanism. And I think probably, I mean, I say, I think, I'm no expert on this, but I think like kind of what the European witches are up to, probably a similar process. Um, and yeah, I like to come here because my, uh, my magnum opus, my Agatha Pizu's apocalyptic almanac medieval witch story, well, it, a lot of it starts in Heidelberg, and so when I come here every year, I like to get a little high, and yeah, listen to the landscape, you know, delve in. So many, aside from the magical side of things, yeah, so many great things have been here. It's a very inspiring place and like one of the main tenets of alchemy solve coagula so like dissolving things and building it anew so with that in mind i'm gonna stop talking for a while i'm gonna smoke my little spliff dissolve myself and go have a little wander so i always go across here's the old bridge go there go through the town and up to the castle we've got great palace gardens which back in the day of frederick Frederick V Palatine, it was like full of like mechanical statues and theatrical troops and must have been very enchanting. I mean, all that's gone now. This place got struck by lightning, it got burnt, it got, I think, bombed in World War II. So it's got a long history, both of magic and destruction. Solve Coagula, perhaps, again. Um, yeah. Also, so they've got um, this museum in the castle, the Apotheca Museum, where they have all these alchemical instruments. It's really cool. I always go in there. Uh, but maybe this time. So, as I said, I mean, I've said this about five times now. Normally, I just get pretty high and wander around, which I'm definitely going to do. But, like, normally the castle's well busy, which is you know, a little bit overwhelming if you're high on a hot day and pretending, not pretending, living the life of a medieval witch. Um, but maybe in corona times it's not going to be so busy so I might get a tour of inside the castle could be pretty cool so yeah going to get on with my witchy business go on a little walk and yeah going to do a little ritual in the garden so I'll probably like check back in then before I start giving bad information about alchemy I'm like, no expert I'm just a humble witch Look at this view. I'll leave it with this lovely view.